This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain a comedy, fantasy, and horror film called Krat. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 1895, while bodies litter outside the manor, the Count watches as the Little Count suffocates two men. Afterward, the Little Count demands more work. The Count then sits down, allowing the Little Count to choke him while his journal is left on the table. Centuries later, siblings Mia and Kevin are busy with their phones in the back seat of their parents' car. That night, after the kids have fallen asleep, their father tucks them to bed in his mother's house and takes away their devices. The kid's grandma questions the parents' decision to leave the kids without them knowing. The father excuses that their trip was a last-minute offer, adding that he wants the kids to have a normal childhood away from their gadgets. In the woods, a large tractor starts uprooting the trees. Soon, a group of activists blocks the tractor's path, so the landowner, Andres, exits. They demand that he stop destroying the forest, and their leader, Lembit, claims that the area is a sacred place. However, Andres insists that the area is his land. Still, Lembit threatens that they place nails on the trees that would damage his machines. Andres berates them, stressing that he has bank loans to pay and that he loses money every minute he stands there. Defeated, he leaves while the group takes a photo, commemorating their success. The next morning, Mia and Kevin complain about being left without their gadgets, but Grandma laughs and suggests that there are plenty of other things to do. She makes the kids help in the garden, though the kids aren't enthusiastic. While feeding the chickens, Grandma picks up something and tells them it's the world's best fertilizer, which helps grow the best vegetables. The kids investigate and smell the item until Grandma reveals that it's chicken dung. Disgusted, the kids run off, and Grandma laughs. While washing their hands, Mia complains about the chores, so Grandma stresses that if they don't do them, they can't eat. Mia argues that Grandma is retired, so she can just buy food, but Grandma reveals that she's saving up for her own funeral. This quiets the kids, and they begin helping out without fuss. Meanwhile, in the nearby manor, the new governor laments at a news article depicting the activists taking their protest against him on social media. He finally looks up as Andres complains about the activists ruining his prospects, asserting that his children will starve. He rants for the governor to get rid of the group that believes that the trees are alive. However, the governor agrees that the trees are alive, confusing him. The governor insists that he's on vacation, but Andres asks him to sign a permit to let him cut the trees. The governor finally signs a permit and hands him a jar of jam to give to his children. After he leaves, his advisor, Haino, and Haino's assistant, Seem, arrive. The governor rants about how posts on social media threaten his image, despite everything he's done. Haino advises him to join social media to appease the public, but the governor thinks he has better things to do. After scolding Seem for sitting on his chair, the governor complains about how people have no respect for authority. Haino advises him to understand what the public wants before leaving him a flyer advertising a blood donation drive. Later, Grandma takes the kids to the local store. Mia and Kevin find other kids playing outside, so Grandma encourages them to meet the kids. The siblings hang out at the park with the twins, Yuli and August. Mia boasts that her online videos have many likes, but complains that her parents took away her phone. The kids share their mutual annoyance that their parents took away their gadgets even though their parents are also using their own phones. The four spend the day playing in the park. Before going home, the twins Twins reveal that there are two computers with internet in the library, giving them hope. Meanwhile, while on a retreat, the parents are forced to surrender their devices, leading the father to realize he also brought the kids' phones with him instead of leaving them at grandma's. At dinner time, Mia takes one look at the meal and leaves, but Kevin stays because he's hungry. Before digging in, grandma urges him to pray. Kevin asks if God exists, and grandma notes that he does if they believe in him. Suddenly, Mia returns and asks for avocados, revealing that she's vegetarian. Instead, Grandma serves her sauerkraut, which she finds smelly. Later, Mia asks Grandma to tell a story. Grandma tells him that when she had no money, she snuck into the manor house during a full moon to build a crat. A crat is a creature that will do all the work for them. Legends say that a Count's missing journal holds the instructions to create a crat. However, Grandma never found it. The next day, the twins take Mia and Kevin to the library just as the governor arrives at the clinic next door. Inside, the activist group say about the sacred forest during the town's blood drive. When Lembit spots him, he accuses the governor of trying to stop their cause. The governor, however, claims he's just there for the blood drive. He adds that he wants to help, insisting on unity amongst people. This seems to satisfy the activist, so the governor 
asks to sign their petition to save the forest. Meanwhile, the librarian complains as workers transfer boxes of items from the manor house, cluttering the library. The kids ask to use the internet, but she tells them to read a book instead. Mia grabs a book from the boxes and realizes that it's the Count's journal. At the same time, the activists rejoice and sing praise while the governor donates blood at the blood drive. In the forest, Andres inspects the trees and discovers that the activists lied about the nails. He then prepares to tear down the trees. That evening, Lembit takes the kids to his house to spend time with the twins, who are his children. The activists celebrate their success while the kids are in the twins' bedroom. While struggling to translate the instructions to make a crat, Kevin questions why they even bother with it. Mia defends that the crat can help grandma with a chore so she can rest. Kevin, however, doesn't think grandma just wants to rest. Meanwhile, Lembit reads a speech on how technology allowed them to connect to nature, unlike what most people assume. He praises both social media and mother nature, earning applause. August then heads down to ask for internet access, but Lembit warns him that the internet is dangerous. Mia joins in, explaining that they found a German book, so they need the internet to translate it. Lembit doesn't relent, so August resorts to crying. This earns him pity from one of the members, so she offers to translate the book for them. The following day, Lembit drops off the kids at their house and takes grandma for a day off. With the adults gone, the kids gather materials to build a crat. While they're building, grandma enjoys massages in a jacuzzi. Soon, Mia places a scythe on their crat. They then plan to meet up at the crossroads roads during the full moon. That evening, the siblings sneak out while grandma is asleep in front of the TV. To bring the crowd to life, Mia insists on taking blood from Kevin, but he's scared. The twins get a better idea and break into the clinic to take a blood bag. Meanwhile, grandma wakes up after accidentally dropping the TV remote. As grandma searches for the children, she notices the journal on their bed. So she heads out and finds the structure that they built. To save her grandchildren, grandma takes the chainsaw to destroy the structure but finds that it's out of fuel. At midnight, a strange store suddenly appears at the crossroads with little Count inside. He teases that his boss can give them jobs, but Yuli argues that they'll have self-driving cars and universal basic income when they grow up, so they won't need to work. Mia then presents the blood bag, insisting that he'll get it if he gives them a soul, but the little Count accuses her of tricking him. While they're talking, Grandma finally refuels the chainsaw and tears down the structure. Mia lets the little Count sniff the blood bag to ensure that it's real. As soon as he smells it, the little count hungrily bites into the bag. Suddenly, the governor wakes from his bed feeling pain from the wound where his blood was taken. Outside, Grandma has successfully broken the structure's leg, but it falls over her. Satisfied, the little Count flies away. Mia demands the soul, but he whispers that it's already there. Still, Mia thinks they were cheated on. They return to the structure and find it ruined with Grandma's glasses amongst the mess. They follow bloody footprints inside the house and see Grandma furiously pounding on meat with a cracked sight stabbed into her head. Mia calls an ambulance in a panic, but Grandma grabs the phone and asks for work. Realizing that the crat has possessed her, Mia backs away in horror. Later, Mia tests out Grandma's obedience. Since the ambulance is on their way, they have Grandma saw off the scythe from her head. By the time the paramedics arrive, Grandma looks back to normal. Back in 1895, a tribesman warned men that if a crat had no more work to do, it would kill them. The men wondered if they could trick a crat, but the tribesmen recounted someone who tried to give it an impossible task like making a ladder out of bread, but it didn't work. A translator jotted it down on a journal, mistaking it as the way to truly trick the crat. His companions ignored his mistake, noting that the count would figure it out by himself. The next day, the governor goes out to relax in their pool but discovers that his pool is gone. Meanwhile, Kevin finds the inflatable pool in their backyard, with Mia relaxing in it. She offers him ice cream, which grandma got by stealing an entire freezer from the store. Grandma then asks for work, so Mia orders her to free the chickens. Kevin worries when they have no more work to give, but Mia is confident that they can ask her to make the bread ladder. She admits that the situation is a mess, but she wants to enjoy it in the meantime. While the kids make grandma do work and impossible stunts, the governor discovers that the forest has been cut down. He calls his office and realizes that the permit he signed for Andres was for the same area as the sacred forest he promised to protect. Defeated, he goes to Andres, who praises him for allowing him to get his job done, adding that he earned an extra 10 euros for the job. Job. This catches the governor's attention, and as he approaches him, Andres excuses himself to prepare for a party at the pizza parlor. Later, the kids enjoy towers of pancakes, but the twins get too full, so they go home. 
Kevin wonders about calling their parents since he's worried about grandma, but Mia insists on sleeping on it first. That evening, the governor drunkenly arrives at the party, but everyone's watching fireworks upstairs. Instead, he sits at the bar to drink. At midnight, grandma wakes up and asks Mia again for work while she's asleep. Mia doesn't wake up, so grandma grabs her by the neck but releases her, noting that she's the wrong blood. Grandma then grabs Kevin, but he's also the wrong blood, so she sniffs the air, searching for the correct one. She sees the fireworks from a distance, so she eats sauerkraut and drinks milk. She then lights up a match under her as she releases gas, causing her to shoot up into the sky. After the fireworks, the governor finds Haino, Seem, and their colleague Yus coming down. The men admit they made a bet with Andres to encourage him to cut down the forest, noting that it was bound to happen anyway. Since the governor had already been disgraced and didn't want their advice, the men plotted to stain his reputation further to reinstate Seem as the new governor. Governor. Betrayed, the governor attacks Haino until Seem throws him out. Suddenly, Grandma arrives and sniffs the governor's hand. She then asks for work, but he laments that he just lost his own job. She then chokes him, so the governor drunkenly tells her to punch Seem and turn Haino and Yus into pizza. Grandma beats up the men, then later processes their bodies into a grinder. In the morning, the kids worry about their missing grandmother while their parents aren't answering their calls. Out of options, they confess everything to Lembit, who orders them to stay while he searches for grandma. When he's gone, the kids ask their automated assistant on his tablet for advice regarding their possessed grandma, unaware that the app is actually connecting them to a boy who's pretending to be the app assistant. The boy alerts his boss that someone has found the Count's journal. The boss calls John, who's attending a presentation for a supercomputer. Meanwhile, Lambit gathers the activists to search for grandma. The kids then approach a priest for help. Curious? The priest notes that he hasn't done an exorcism before. He takes out a drone explaining that the church uses it when one of their older pastors gets lost. The drone, however, immediately runs out of batteries. The governor finally wakes up at the pizza parlor and finds that grandma has cooked several pizzas. Grandma asks for work again, so the governor tells her to continue what she was doing before she went there. He then notices her bloodied face, so he follows her out back and vomits upon the site of the massacre she made. Later, the priest decides not to help the kids, convinced that they're just tricking him. The twins decide to head home, noting that spending time with the siblings might give them childhood trauma. This strikes a nerve in Mia, so when Kevin asks if they should call their dad again, Mia breaks down because she thinks their father doesn't want to bother with them anymore. Suddenly, Grandma returns and immediately chokes the kids. The priest arrives since he left his drone. Upon seeing Grandma, he brandishes his phone, which shows a picture of the cross. This allows them to restrain Grandma and prepare an exorcism. Meanwhile, Lembit discovers the ruined forest, so he confronts Andres and headbutts him. In his office, the governor sinks into despair and begins to unclothe. By nightfall, the priest prays over grandma's body and instructs the kids to pour hot water over her. Mia grows concerned for her grandmother, but the priest insists, so they reluctantly pour hot water on her. Grandma screams in pain as a little count crawls out of her. With the little count in chains, the priest beats him. He grabs a knife to kill him but the little count defends that he only did what he was asked. The governor lies on his desk as fire burns under him, seemingly accepting death. However, he gets up when the activists start singing outside the manor. Driven to madness, the governor invites them to film him as the manor burns down. He then ridicules them for thinking they can make a change by posting on the internet, stressing that he's been working to change the world throughout his life yet ended up being shamed. Lembit admits that he doesn't know what to do since another sacred forest was cut down, but he refuses to just let the world be destroyed. However, the governor has decided that a horrible end is better than an endless horror. Lembit points out that everything will continue after his death, so he has to solve the problem in this life. The governor realizes that he doesn't want to be reincarnated only to face the same problems, so he accepts their help. Meanwhile, the chains ball drops from grandma, so the priest takes the little count outside and drowns him in the pool. He then throws the drone into the pool, causing it to explode. The explosion distracts the activists, so when the governor jumps into their arms, they miss him. The governor falls onto Lembit, killing them both. Mia then demands the priest bring grandma back back to life. The priest notes that only God has the power to bring life. Since he won't help, Mia and Kevin pray for their grandma to live. Suddenly, a helicopter arrives, deploying soldiers into the house. The kids cower in fear as the men take the Count's journal and resuscitate grandma. When she gets up, Mia smiles and Kevin hugs her. John arrives and takes the journal. The men retreat, and the family is happily reunited. 
Days later, the parents return to pick the kids up. Mia starts rambling about their crazy time there but stops when she spots their mobile phones. She takes them and heads back inside to post something. Grandma steps out, and the father gives her a magnetic souvenir before heading inside. Grandma coyly sticks it on her head before going in. Meanwhile, John has used the boy's blood to create a new crat. He puts the soul into the supercomputer, and it immediately asks for work. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.